Good evening. My name is Tim Neff, Vice President and Director of Museum and Education at Soldiers and Sailors, and I want to welcome everybody to our Spotlight On program. Joining me as usual is Michael Krauss. I'm the curator and historian here at Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Hall and Museum. Yes, and that's where we are tonight here at Soldiers and Sailors in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this, of course, is our Spotlight On program. The second Thursday of every month, we highlight a different topic. And uh, this month, we decided to highlight scrapbooks. And uh, without getting too much into it just yet, I just think I want to point out that one of the reasons we picked this topic was because tomorrow is Veterans Day. And for a lot of veterans, this is a way to preserve their story mm -hmm. and keep their memory and, and, of course, pass it down from one generation to the next. And we've been very thankful to have some of these actually donated to us by these families. Um, so uh, we thought we'd do uh, a little highlight and share some of those with us. Before we get started, especially if you're new to the program, this is where we are, Soldiers and Sailors. Uh, it is a memorial hall and museum that was built back in 1910 as a Civil War memorial. Uh, but today it stands as a memorial and a museum that honors all those who have served our country from the Civil War to present day. And our exhibits are filled with artifacts that have been donated to us through the years by veterans and their families. And we use these objects to tell their story and honor their service to our country. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is a program that we've started a couple years ago just to kind of highlight some of those special artifacts and stories that we have. So if you haven't been down to visit us sometime, just a little pitch. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, always a good time to come see us, but tomorrow especially is a great time. Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit more later on, but we are open free tomorrow for Veterans Day with extended hours. So um, if you're looking for something to do and a good way to honor Veterans Day, what better way than to come down to Soldiers and Sailors? As always, if we have any questions during the program, you can submit a question on Facebook in the comments section, or you can email us if you're watching on YouTube at soldiersandsailorspittsburgh at gmail.com, and we will take care of questions at the end of the program. Here we are, we've already introduced ourselves. And that brings us to our kind of initial just look at mm -hmm. in general scrapbooks. We're gonna get into some really detailed stories as we move along, but we just wanted to first address, you know, just scrapbooks in general. So what can you tell us about this, this one here? Well, scrapbooks are kind of what they say they are. Right. It's a book for preserving scraps of your, your history or things you're interested in. Um, they're uh, sometimes commercially made. We'll look at some examples mm -hmm. like that. Sometimes put together by uh, uh, an individual might might actually paint the front of it or, mm -hmm. or carve the front of it. Um, inside, um, you'll find uh, most most commonly photographs, mm -hmm. newspaper articles, right. and, and we'll look at some of the contents. That right. We're see. So this one has a few patches, and and mm -hmm. as you said, photographs, and then. Uh, um, you know, pretty generic scrapbook cover. Just something you'd buy in right. a, a drugstore, a right. grocery store. Right. But as you said, they can get a lot fancier. And this is one of the fancier ones we came across in our collection. Yeah, this is really a beautiful piece of uh, folk art. Um, I, I've never seen anything like this before in all the scrapbooks that I've, I'm familiar with. Mm -hmm. But it's made out of wood, and those figures are inlaid in a different kind of wood. They're mahogany. Uh, the other part is birch, but you notice too on the left hand side, it has a wooden hinge that opens up and it has a kind of humorous front page, front cover with a fat drill instructor mm -hmm. drilling the, the guys. The little guy that yeah. was yelling at the, yeah. at the new recruits there. And inside uh, this, this particular one um, wasn't um, a lot of army stuff, but it seemed like it might've been kept by um, someone at home who, who collected pictures of airplanes and patriotic pictures. Right. Of the mm -hmm. Here's an example of a painted one. Right. Kind of mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Homemade, uh, most likely. Um, plywood cover, uh, scene of uh, tropical scene. Maybe it's uh, Pearl Harbor, yep. maybe Hawaii. Police station there. Somebody in the islands. Um, it's got a, a, a a hardware store hinge and uh, tying together the pages inside. Yeah, pages could be added or subtracted in some of these. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a way to uh, add additional pages and that would have been through that uh, string uh, that ran through a hole in the, in the pages right. inside. This is the inside of that one. Yeah, again, it's this is not a, this is not one that's recounting a person's particular military history, but there are a lot of, um, 
Prince of Soldiers. This was, uh, it, no, remember, the front cover was uh, Hawaii mm -hmm. or the island. So we're seeing a lot of Marine uh, right. patriotic sure. pieces in here. Um, uh, some football memorabilia. Now, the thing about scrapbooks a lot of times too is, is the images or the collected pieces are sometimes glued right to the page. Right. Ooh, that's a hard thing for us. Yes. <laughs> because it, it's um, it's not archival. It's, it's, right. It's, it's Eventually against that the, glue is going to do, you know, damage to the It It will. It can. The yes. piece. Yeah. 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 So we'll talk about some of the ways that we can preserve them. Right. Yeah, them. we will uh, yeah. talk about that a little bit closer to the end. So if you have a scrapbook at home, just some of the, the general practices is that uh, should be taken care of these. Um, uh, and of course, the other way we've already seen, you know, with the little corners yeah. and things like that, that yeah. people use the photo mounting quarter. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and here's another commercial, commercially av available one. This was probably sold at a, a PX um, in in Southeast Asia in Vietnam because uh, it has pre-printed on the cover memory of South Vietnam and um, a map. So, you know, a soldier might be able to show where he traveled mm -hmm. on the map. It's a, a keepsake again, a reminder. Um, not only for the soldier, but maybe for the family of, right. of the soldier. Yeah, I think that's what's so important about these. Mm -hmm. that, you know, they are, um, you know, precious to the family, passed down from generation mm -hmm. to generation. And quite honestly, sometimes I'm surprised people are willing to donate them to us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But of course, we're very honored to have them. And, yeah. you know, we make sure the stories are continued on through programs like this. Um, but uh, it, it is, you know, such an important family piece. Well, you're right. It, they, they are stories that people are trying to tell us something. Right. I right. mean, they're trying to remember something, but they're also trying to tell us something. Yeah. And that could be about themselves yeah. or just about things they're interested yeah. in. Yeah. Or, airplanes. Yeah, right. right. Like yeah. we saw with airplanes. Yeah. And you get a look into that person's uh, life. Yeah. So we, we have in our collection, scrapbooks go way back. Um, this is one of the oldest ones we have and probably one of the most important ones we have. And this is a scrapbook that was kept by a man named Charles McKenna, who was a Civil War soldier, uh, later became uh, a judge in Allegheny County mm -hmm. and also was on the, uh, the board here, the founding members right. of, of Soldiers and Sailors. McKenna, um, I wish I, if there's anybody I wish I could have talked to, it would be mm -hmm. Charles McKenna. Mm -hmm. um, he had a mind... This is one of his scrapbooks. We maybe have seven or eight of them. Right. It, it seemed like he would sit down in the morning with a newspaper and just snip out the the stories that interested him mm -hmm. and, and put them in scrapbooks. Right. That was his computer. Yeah, I was just going to say, think about the time that mm -hmm. we're talking about here. Yeah. That was all your information. You know, that yeah. was your internet. That was everything. If he wanted to refer to a particular story, he, he might remember it's in scrapbook one or scrapbook right. two mm -hmm. and go back to it. So this one is called War Scrap. And um, there's a lot of really good Civil War stuff in this one. Right. So let's take a look here. We have a beautiful hand. I love this hand-drawn uh, Zouave soldier here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, McKenna belonged to the 155th Pennsylvania, who uh, he joined in 1862, and he served through the whole war. In, in 1864, the regiment was, uh, was presented with a special Zouave uniform. Mm -hmm. And that those uniforms are... Very elaborate. We we right. actually have one. Right, one is on display at the museum here. Mm -hmm. uh, they have big baggy trousers, a short jacket, embroidery on the on the called a tombo on the front, and they wore a fez like it's a like a, a Turkish kind of a mm -hmm. cap with a with a with a tassel, tassel on yeah. it, mm -hmm. and and then leggings. So uh, McKenna draws this picture in camp. In, uh, of the new uniform that they were presented. And this may be the very first representation, although it wasn't published, but it's, right. it's a very first eyewitness man drawing, uh, one soldier drawing another soldier in that uniform. In that new uniform, yeah. yeah. McKenna also, um, we looking through his scrapbooks, pretty interesting. Um, they're, uh, again, these are all Civil War articles. There's articles about commanders. There's articles that were written during the war, after the war, and there are a few letters pasted in. And this letter uh, was a letter home to the parents of one of his good friends who was killed on picket post duty. Mm -hmm. McKenna was um, was in the second shift, let's say. There was a shift out, you know, with their rifles at night, guarding the camp uh, behind a in their positions, various positions. And when that guard was called in, this one individual didn't return. 
So they sent the second shift out and they found him lay, lying with his rifle uh, over a tree stump, but he'd been shot through the head. He hmm. was dead. So McKenna wrote home to his parents because they buried him. Right in that there. spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, he, he included a map there and shows where, where uh, this friend was buried. And the family used that map to go to Virginia and recover the body and bring it home. Right. And somehow McKenna ended up with the letter and put it in a scrapbook. Right. So what a story that is. That's a great story. Yeah. McKenna also uh, was, a, was a member of the uh, Memorial Committee for the 155th Pennsylvania. Um, you'll see a, a few um, reunion re re ribbons. In fact, on the right-hand side, the one with the Maltese cross, that was their very first reunion. I think it was in 1871 at Lafayette Hall here in Pittsburgh. Um, and then on the very right-hand side is a program from the dedication of their monument at Gettysburg on Little Round Top. Now, if you're familiar with their monument, it doesn't look like that. Yes, now. right. Yeah, <laughs> They added a standing figure to mm. it uh, a few years after it had been uh, dedicated there. And this, But this is what it originally looked like. Right. And this is the letter that just knocked me out. <laughs> right. And this, if you were joined us last month, mm -hmm. we actually talked a little bit about Charles McKenna and his connections through mm -hmm. Dollar Bank. And I kind of teased this story. And I, I know how excited you are because... Uh, this is an uh, amazing find uh, in our collection. Yeah, he had written to in after years after the war. Um, well, he was a he was a, a judge, a very educated man, uh, very involved in community and military affairs. Corresponded with a lot of Civil War generals that commanded his division and brigade. Uh, and one of the people he corresponded with was George Britton McClellan, mm -hmm. who was general of the armies. Um, early on, uh, and of course, uh, if you know Civil War history, he was uh, eventually dismissed. But the photograph on the right shows Abraham Lincoln with uh, General McClellan, McClellan, who's, they called him Little Mac, he was mm, small. Yep. <laughs> and you can see comparatively to Lincoln, him standing there. This is a very famous photo. It was taken um, near Antietam after the battle and uh, Lincoln came to, to uh, see, uh, see McClellan and discuss with him why some of the some of the some of the tactics of the battle and why McClellan hadn't followed up with mm -hmm. uh, uh, dealing a, one of a tougher big, blow. Yeah, one of his yeah. big problems. That's true. Mm -hmm. So McKenna wrote to must have we don't have McKenna's letter, but he must have written to McClellan and asked him um, in this picture. He had seen this picture and he said, who are these people in this picture? Mm -hmm. And this is in George McClellan's own handwriting. Mm -hmm. McClellan is answering Charles McKenna, and he names who all the people are in that photograph. Now, he he didn't remember one or two of them, right. but there are there is one or two. There are one or two individuals in there who have previously escaped ident identification. Never knew who they were. Didn't know who they were. Mm -hmm. And and here it McClellan, who is standing right there with them, right. Um, saying who those people were. In, in fact, uh, uh, George Armstrong Custer is in there. He's got a big hat, the big hat sort of right uh, in front of McClellan, but behind him there. Um, and there are a number of uh, generals and, and uh, just some staff officers, but right. it's, a, it's a real, real undiscovered gem and it's pasted into McKenna's scrap. Right, the only place you'd find that information That's is right. on this page. We have transcribed it, mm -hmm. but yes, the original is the only place you'll see it is here. Right. So we moved to uh, World War One, and um, scrapbooking, of course, is is going to continue. It's continuing to this day. Yep, still done today. Uh, this is a this is a, a scrapbook that was really um, uh, probably a ledger, and it was turned into a scrapbook. Mm -hmm. It wasn't sold as a scrapbook, so it's decorated with a shield, patriotic shield, and then inside, on the this is like one of the first pages. He's talking. Uh, to his mother. So uh, maybe his mother compiled all the stuff that this soldier had sent home. His name was Frank. It was two brothers, Frank Church and Frederick Church. They're involved with this, but they they sent home stuff apparently and she glued it into the album, um, and especially a lot of um, commercial photographs and postcards of Rome and places mm -hmm. like that. Places where he was. Not, not very interesting someone, but there is an interesting page in here. 
and that is this page. So you see um, there's uh, pasted in here is uh, a note with two little cloth dolls. Um, there's a red, white, and blue ribbon with a miniature doughboy helmet. Mm -hmm. And then to the right of that is a miniature forager. That's a braided cord that um, the larger version was worn on a soldier's yeah, on uniform. Your, on yeah. your shoulder yeah. sleeve area. So um, this is something I discovered, didn't know about until I read uh, what, what these little cloth dolls are. And there are two figures named uh, Nanette and Rin Tin Tin. Mm -hmm. uh, in France, before World War I, uh, Nanette and Rin Tin Tin were very popular children's book uh, figures. There were uh, kind of cartoon illustrated figures that were written about the adventures of Nanette and Rin Tin Tin. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were um, you know, very sweet and endeared to the French, to French children. And um, so what, what happened during World War II or World War I, especially when the Americans were in Paris and still fighting or passing through Paris, um, little girls made these little cloth dolls and gave them to soldiers for good luck. And on the right, you see a soldier wearing one on, right. his, on his pocket. pocket there. Yep. Yeah. And the note says, surely good luck will abide with every man, woman, or child who will take to his kind care and keeping by the aid of a pin, little Rin, little Nanette and Rin Tin Tin. Yeah. So they weren't allowed to buy them and mm -hmm. they weren't allowed to ask for them. But right. if a child gave it to them, mm -hmm. it was considered like a good lucky, luck. a good yeah. lucky, yeah. good, good lucky charm. Yeah. Yeah. So I've never seen a real one. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the beauty of a scrapbook. Right. You know, somebody put it away. It it's been out of the light and mm -hmm. out of the, it wasn't in a frame. It didn't lose its color. It's like, it's like brand new. Right. It's been very well preserved. Um, another scrapbook. Um, this one is unusual in the fact that it belonged to um, a society here in Pittsburgh. And what I mean by a society is um, there was a group. Uh, I need to find the picture here. Uh, there was a group called uh, the fatherless children of France. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they, they existed on the French side and they, they found orphans or, or, or children that didn't have fathers anymore. Mm -hmm. And they were looking for American uh, churches or civic groups to adopt a child. Right, right. Give them a home. Give them a home. So this, this album was compiled. Um, it belonged, uh, the, the, Organization here was the Ross Township branch of the American Red Cross. This is Charles Heber in Perrysville, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So she, um, let's, let's go to the other page. Yeah. So this album contains correspondence from the mother of the child. Um, first of all, thanking the American Red Cross chapter here for the money that they were giving her. Mm -hmm. And kind of reporting on her condition, you know, like how she's doing right. and, and everything. And in, in there is a picture of the little girl and her father. So one, one, of, the, um, one of the letters, which is the one that's in the middle, uh, talks about her father. Her father was wounded at the Battle of uh, Dick's Mood in 1914, November 10th, and belonged to the Regiment of Marines. Um, and after three months in the hospital, he was unfit for the front. He, he was uh, embarked on the Mustafa II of the Division of Patrol Boats from March 1917 uh, from Italy to uh, Solankia. He entered the hospital on the 20th of March 1917 with typhoid fever and died April 4th uh, following their, thereof. And he belongs to those who died from France. So they, they all they say, uh, I remain alone with my little Mary. This is the mother. Right, coming from mom. Who is now nine years old without any help. I therefore beg you, sir, to accept my humble thanks for the help which you have been uh, good enough to give me. In your great country of America, they know how to come to the aid of those who help, who the war has left in sorrow. So it's very touching, mm -hmm. very touching. And she, some of the other letters, she describes 
um, that the girl uh, is not doing real well. You know, she's what we would call depressed mm -hmm. and despondent and not responsive. And um, we, we don't know what happened to her, uh, but there's a, there are pages of letters and correspondence right. from, from France. So there's the there girl right there. Up close up yeah. there. Kind of a pouty looking little yeah. girl. Yeah. Well, this could have been yeah. after the, yeah. the news, of course. Yeah, after her father yeah, passed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And she, you know, um, but it gave a person a, a face to somebody overseas. Right. And it, it speaks to the benevolence of Americans too mm -hmm. about and, and the Red Cross organization. Red Cross. It's, it's of mm -hmm. course still out there today doing what they can. And this is all coming together in, in the North Hills here of Pittsburgh. Right. That's right. Um, this is uh, an album um, that didn't have a lot of really interesting parts to it. Um, the the soldier's name was Alan Schofield, and and we feel like uh, he was sending things back. Mm -hmm. another, um, another example of that. Mm -hmm. uh, this is dated 1943. But one thing that happens, you know, when when you're sending things home and they're being collected, is it's a time capsule. So. It's a time stamp. And, and why this is important in this particular case are the two patches that we see. So the patch on the left is the 20th Division, mm -hmm. the, the Pennsylvania Keystone, yeah. uh, um, which he joined first. And then he went into the 101st Airborne. Um, the Screaming Eagles. The Screaming Eagles. So that patch, and, and this is before D-Day. This is before right. anything. So he had, he had joined the Airborne sent home a patch. And in the world of patch collectors, uh, there's a strata of 101st Airborne. Mm -hmm. And they, they know every little variety. Yeah, of the, any little change yeah, or minute detail. Where like, that was made, when it was issued, right. pictures of men wearing it. And this one is unusual because it has a white tongue. And, and that's a, a rare variant of the patch. Right. And, and now we can date. We know this is not a copy. Mm -hmm. We know that we can... Uh, use this as a reference point that that's a 1943 variant of the 101st uh, Screaming Eagles match. Yeah, right. So one of those little uh, tidbits of information that may not mean a lot to the layman or somebody that's not interested in it, yeah. but if you have that right person that you said is a dedicated to that, to that, yeah. you know, group, they're going to uh, find it extremely fascinating. Yes. Um, this is a, this, photo album is in beautiful condition it's like it, it it's like it was never open it's got a leather cover it's clean as a whistle it's pliable it's just a beautiful album well taken care of uh get the sense that once it was completed it may never have been yeah, opened that again was it, right. yeah and this belonged to a nurse an army nurse named helen valerie and she you'll see a lot of scrapbooks during this era too that have black pages, black construction paper pages. Uh, unfortunately, those are the most brittle pages there are. Some of them, you touch them and they just disintegrate. Right. But but in those black pages, it was pretty common to write in white ink and title um, your photographs. And Valerie was um, was was a detail oriented yeah, person. Very diligent. Yeah, detail. very diligent. Every photograph is labeled where it is, her friends, who they are. Uh, and she was in France, uh, in Germany, which we'll see. Um, and so it's a really valuable uh, record, not only of the war, but of, of a nurse, mm -hmm. a woman nurse in serving in France and Germany. Right. And specifically some of her experiences, as we see mm -hmm. here. Yeah, those are. That, were, that she were in, uh, you know, mementos. Hotel, those hotel or, yeah, right. uh, scraps. You know, it, it helped her to remember, you know, where she was. Right. She collected them and put them in there. And you see the little details, how, you know, uh, diligent she was with getting all of that, you know, written down about each mm -hmm. photograph. Yeah, her friends. Mm -hmm. You know, she made comments about them. And um, there's, you know, vehicles and a lot of things. But one place she, she visited was... Um, was Ebenzi concentration camp. And uh, she was there in 1945, May 1945, uh, right after liberation. So she is taking photographs of some of the, uh, some of the bodies laying there, uh, some of the um, places of interest, like uh, the hospital where, where autopsies were done on prisoners that were killed, uh, the ovens, the crematorium, um, 
and it's another page in her album. Yeah, right. really. Yeah, just uh, a, uh, yeah, another one of her experiences, however, a very you know, yeah. I'm sure poignant, poignant, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, she may not have showed that to many people, right? And this is just one page, right? There was a couple of there pages were two of this. Pages of, uh, yeah, they were a little more gruesome. I chose not to show them. Right. Yeah. And, and then she ended up at Burkitt's Garden. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like a page or two after this, which was Hitler's eagle's nest, right. where, where Hitler uh, had a, his uh, retreat. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's photographed there. Right. So, you know, once again, I know you touched on it, but the amazing story of a, of a female yeah. nurse yeah. kind of coming in behind the army and going that same route that many of the soldiers, yeah. you know, had gone through themselves. Yeah. And, of course, documenting it all along the way. Yeah. And we like this one because it says Pittsburgh. Yeah, right. <laughs> sometimes that just is enough yeah. to grab you. Yeah, um, you know, there's his name, and it says Pittsburgh, and um, pictures of his wife and child, and maybe mother and father, or brother and sister. Very typical uh, pictures uh, from that era. And here's a good one to see the disintegration. Yeah, of I was the just going to say this is really showing that uh, disintegration yeah. and showing you know someone that isn't as diligent as right. Helen was with getting the uh, everything identified and and uh, Helen was the top. She, yeah. she was very organized. Right. Uh, these are some other pictures in Fred's scrapbook. I mean, there were some good pictures. These are aircraft um, aircraft wrecks or uh, or. Um, uh, Airfields. Airfields, and, broken machinery. Right. Um, now, some of these pictures uh, you'll find in albums, some of them were commercially available, meaning that a, a photographer, let me, maybe an army photographer, took the pictures. Mm -hmm. And then in, in some um, some way, the guys could buy. Right. Uh, Packets. Packet, packet 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 so, so yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, this one, I I don't recognize these photos, but in many of the albums we have, they'll be... Right. Uh, dead Japanese soldiers or um, dead German soldiers or uh, bombed out places or a crashed airplane right. that are commercial. That, right. As opposed to the, the individual that actually takes right. the photograph himself. That's right. That's right. So here's Jimmy's scrapbook. Yeah. <laughs> this is an interesting one. Yeah. Jimmy was, um, was a Marine. We don't know his last name. But this this scrapbook is dated 1936, so it's right before the war, and he went to China, and um, Jimmy um, had a lot of girlfriends. <laughs> yes, and and there are lots of pictures of girlfriends in here, um, and I and I say this uh, tongue in cheek, and I don't mean to um, to overlook the fact that um, this is a trade that's um, you know. Probably that, that is that that may have been abusing people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right. we want to just say that this is 1936, and um, these women were um, making themselves available in the port towns that sailors came in. Right. And they sold pictures of themselves. Yeah. yeah. Again, the, the, these probably weren't taken by Jimmy. These no. were probably bought no. uh, along the way. No, I think the next one. Yeah. Uh, though there is an example. Yeah, on the left hand side, uh, Jimmy's in a room with a with a woman, and it, and it said and it's written in ink, uh, Jimmy having a good time. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and that that was a picture that was probably taken by the hotel, mm -hmm. and you know, right. taken for him, and he 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 bought it. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, not every picture in there was risky or risque. There were looks like uh, maybe a sister or a friend in the cover, the second photo. Mm -hmm. And a, a poem about the girls he's met, um, but we don't know anything more about him. Yeah, this is <laughs> yeah. kind of one of those mystery ones that uh, you certainly can read into in many different ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, um, we have this photograph. This is Elaine Berkowitz photograph album. Elaine is a member of our board. Mm -hmm. um, she joined the army in 1974 as an enlisted person. So her scrapbook has a lot of great pictures of her training, her friends, um, some of her commanding officers, uh, different experiences. She had promotions, um, um, lots, of, lots of mementos of her service. Now she served, uh, the, the, the scrapbook goes from 1974 to 78. But do you, do you remember when she retired? It was 
in the much later than that. <laughs> yeah, she got called back to Iraq right. in the early two thousands. Mm -hmm. um, she 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 became a dentist. She right. went to dental school, mm -hmm. which elevated her in rank. She became right. an officer. Like she was a dentist in the in the military. That's right. Mm -hmm. And um, and she she went to uh, Iraq and uh, um, performed dental duties there and uh, retired as a lieutenant colonel. And we have a lot of her uh, pieces in our collection. And in fact, her uniform is on display. Yeah, it's in, on display in the exhibit here. I, I just want to point out there, you see a cool little photo on the bottom right there of the 99th division yeah. patch there. And then I think we have another page of some of her yeah, photos here. Those are promotions. Um, mm -hmm. And I like the one on the right-hand side. Elaine told me those are her parents. So they were present when she was promoted. Um, I don't know uh, which promotion that would have been, but um, she is with her parents and it's a proud moment in sharing it with uh, with them and, and remembering it in her scrapbook. Right. Yeah, this one was, uh, uh, Elaine is a, a good friend of ours uh, as a board member here. And uh, once she heard about that we were doing this, she wanted to, to share this. And we were, yeah. you know, kind of kind of great because we've heard her stories before, yeah. but this gave us the, the sign of some of the visuals behind some of her early yeah. time in the service. So yeah. thank you very much, Elaine, for, for sharing this with us. I don't know if you're watching tonight or you might, might be watching later on, you said. So I don't know if we have any questions. I don't see any, but this is a good time now if we do have any questions to go ahead and submit those. Um, but maybe in the meantime, this would be a good time for us to talk a little bit about caring for scrapbooks yeah, yeah. and, you know, how we do that. And, uh, you know, a lot of things that maybe we don't even always do in practice because yeah. it's just financially not feasible. But, you know, there are best practices and some recommendations. Yeah, it it, it can be expensive you know, if you're going to buy archival materials to um, to preserve your scrapbook. Uh, we don't like to see, and I'm sorry, Elaine, because of calling you out on this, yeah. but the sticky pages that have the acrylic over top of them, um, archivally, that's that's not a good thing. Uh, we, we, in some cases, uh, we would suggest that you photograph the album as it's as it is, mm -hmm. so we know the order of everything, right. and then remove those photos mm -hmm. and put them in uh, protective sleeves in in the uh, uh, even digitally photograph them after that and maybe put copies of the photos back in the album. Right. In, in that so, so you have the feel of it. The, the feel is still right. there, but right. you're preserving the, the actual real item. Uh, and the photos there. from, from Elaine's album, those from the 1970s um, are not, um, uh, the color is not color fast. Mm -hmm. Like the process um, it tends to fade. Right. So you, you want to, not subject them to anything that's going to accelerate that at all, but capture them in a photograph as soon as you can. Right. Um, other photos, other albums, like the ones that are falling apart. Again, I would suggest photographing each page mm -hmm. so you know the order, because we don't know why they're in those particular. Right. There may they're, be a they're, reason they may they're, not they're, be exactly. Um, and then removing them and scanning them, or uh, one thing we like to do. Uh, especially, uh, I know we did it in uh, Helen's scrapbook, is we take archival paper, a uh, tissue paper, mm -hmm. and we put it between every page. Right. Yeah, her, hers is so valuable with the writing in it and everything mm -hmm. that we just wanna make sure that it, the pages don't, the photographs don't touch anything else mm -hmm. except something that's uh, non-acidic. Right. And that's the key when, uh, just to be clear, when you're saying archival paper, yes. it's something that is not acidic, that will not bleed onto anything or yeah. cause any damage to the item. Yeah. Um, once again, it's going to come with a price tag, but, yeah. uh, you know, that's the best way to make sure that no further damage is going to be occurring yeah. to, to these. Uh, yeah, these at the least I would do, I would slip in our, uh, that archival tissue paper mm -hmm. in between each page. Right. And, and then just be very careful handling and photo, I should say the least as part of that package, photographing right. the book. Yeah, and especially, you know, you think about newspaper, we all know how delicate newspapers mm -hmm. are. Yeah. Um, so scanning or photographing those pages, um, you know, it's gonna get it digital and save yeah. it forever. And, yeah. you know, you can literally recreate the book, as yeah. we said, if you wanted to, yeah. where it is, you yeah. know, something that's physical and, and in your hands, but you know is, is yeah. safely preserved. So McKenna's book, the, mm -hmm. there's a there's that one a that, great example. that this one, he glued everything, <laughs> right? 100% contact mm -hmm. glue on, on wood pulp paper, which is 
uh, wood pulp paper has acid in it. Right. Um, you, you can usually tell it by by its brittleness. Um, it will, you know, it was a cheaper way to make paper. Before that, they made it out of cotton rag. Right. In the 1870s, they found a way to make it out of wood pulp, uh, which has acid and and other other things that are bad in it. So McKenna glued his stuff down. So mm -hmm. now what do we do? Right. Yeah. Right. That that's a situation. Now, that's a situation where that letter is so valuable mm -hmm. that we will someday have a professional right. paper conservator mm -hmm. remove it from that. Album. Right. To save it. Yeah, to save it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It that deserves the expense and the time right. to do it. There are there are examples that that, that needs to be done with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are people out there that, yes. you know, have this ability to, yeah. you know, safely remove something and uh, preserve it for the long term. Yeah, you, you need to look at a, uh, a qualified uh, paper conservator. conservator. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm still seeing not seeing any questions. But as always, I'll take a few moments here to just talk about other things happening in and around soldiers and sailors. Um, uh, we are open daily, I, as I always recommend, though, to check our website, soldiersandsailorshall.org, um, just to make sure that uh, there's nothing to prohibiting a visit on a special day or a specific day. Guided tours are always available by appointment. Uh, you can call me and set up a guided tour. Uh, tomorrow, I mentioned this, but tomorrow we are open for free uh, for Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. We have a special exhibit set up, actually two special exhibits set up. One is an amazing collection of patches that I finally saw kind of unfolded today. Um, I mean, it's almost every patch, uh, yeah. you know, that, that, that you can find out there that this gentleman collected. There may be a thousand patches. Yeah. That he meticulously sewed onto blankets. Right. Yeah. So we have the blankets on display with these these patches that are hand sewn on there. Uh, we also have um, this, uh, an exhibit with a behind the scenes look at our America Defender statue. Uh, of course, we've had a spotlight on about this. We don't have to go in. And we we know Michael created it. Uh, it's it's out on our side. Uh, Bigelow side uh, for, for public view, um, but we have a little exhibit uh, that talk, that shows some of the behind the scenes, look some of the equipment that he used and the molds, things we actually talked about in our spotlight on, which this is a good time to maybe point out. You can always watch these spotlight ons whenever you sure. want. You don't have to watch it live. It's always available on uh, our YouTube and Facebook pages archived to watch past programs. So if you've missed any of them, you know, you can always go back and check those out. Um, but, you know, that's going on tomorrow and Veterans Day. What better time to come visit us? We yeah. kind of joke sometimes how every day is Veterans Day around mm -hmm. here. But truly, tomorrow is one of the best days to, to come and see us. And it's free. So you yeah. can't really go wrong. I yeah. uh, also wanted to point out a, a new program we have here called Adopt an Artifact. Um, you know, we talked to you just a minute ago how expensive it is to preserve and conserve and take care of our collection. Uh, and we uh, selected a few items that need some TLC, that mm -hmm. need some some care. And um, we're, you know, putting it out there on our website through the Ad Adopt an Artifact that people can donate uh, money to mm -hmm. basically take care of these artifacts. Mm -hmm. And you can go on under support us and find the page on our website and see what we have. You know, some of the items, we have a flag, I know. I know there's some World War II bomber jackets that as we build towards the goal, um, we can get them preserved and taken care of the right way. Uh, so that's a new program we wanted to point out and we'll be probably talking about even more as we yeah. get along here. This is just a, the very beginnings of it. Um, our tabletop gamers, we do not have a November tabletop gaming, but we do have a next one will be Saturday, December 17th. So um, any of those gamers out there, we hope that you will join us on the December 17th. And I know we're going to be doing a little bit about the Battle of the Bulge, and, you mm -hmm. know, with December being the, the time frame for that in World War II. And that's actually also what we're going to highlight in our next Spotlight on program. Uh, we're going to do the Battle of the Bulge and some items that we have in our collection related to that uh, very important battle of World War II, the last German offensive. Um, and uh, we December is, like I said, when, when the battle took place. So we're going to pull some of the items that we have in our collection you know, out and, and share those stories uh, next month for our Spotlight On, which will be on December 8th, once again at 7 o'clock. So I did see a comment here from Patrick. Hey, Patrick, how are you doing? Thank you for um, tuning in. Uh, Patrick's a, an old volunteer and then intern and hey. good friend of ours. And uh, he says, thank you. Scrapbooks are amazing to look through. And you're exactly right. Uh, it's one of the perks of the job here, yeah. isn't it? Just yeah. sometimes on a quiet afternoon, sitting down and 
who knows? Sometimes you make a discovery about, uh, you know, the McClellan clone letter photo or yeah. uh, Rin Tin Tin in the net, whatever yeah. it may be. Um, it's it's always good to be to be learning out here. So, so I don't know if you have any other closing words. Uh, uh, no, just uh, come see us. There's a lot to see here. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of a lot of stories that we we tell. A lot of pieces you can learn from. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the building's beautiful. Um, and now for all of you out there, maybe, you know, it's a time for you to start your own scrapbook. Of yeah. course, we talked about military scrapbooks, but uh, I sure know if sometimes, uh, you know, I did some pretty cool things and I wish I had uh, yeah. a better record of them. Uh, you know, yeah, you might have some uh, photos spread around or something like that. But man, if you had Helen's patience and put oh, something yeah. together like that, uh, yeah. you know, it's it's pretty cool. So. Uh, Jason, thank you. I uh, appreciate the program. appreciate you tuning in. Thank, thank you for the comment. And I think that's going to bring us to an end. So I want to just thank everybody for joining us tonight and look forward to seeing you next month. And just remember, anytime you want, you can watch these videos on Soldiers and Sailors YouTube and Facebook pages. So with that, good night, and we'll see you next month. Good night.